Welcome everybody out there to our next webinar here at uh, JFD Brokers and uh, in the name of JFD, JFD Brokers as well, a warm welcome. My name Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski, as always for those kind of webinars, those kind of topics and those kind of approaches to trading. Today it's once again about stock trading and it's indeed already part three and it will be the final one um, that I can promise and I can promise already a little bit about the final result today. It will be a very simple strategy and we have been already quite close in part one and part two but finally i will show how we reach uh, our yeah, final destination final strategy for stock trading um, at least one kind of stock trading how you might do it by your own as well and it will be that simple um, so it's something for everybody's trading portfolio. That is, by the way, always um, one thing I want to emphasize here that I like stock trading, uh, especially because of two reasons. One is stocks have an intrinsic bias and that bias goes north, meaning if you open trades, we have that statistical edge already on our side. And that's quite good. Of course, we know that there might be financial crisis or whatever might happen uh, related to, to trade wars or whatever. And in those times, even stocks <clears throat> may go south. But if you do it right, <clears throat> then we step out at the right time or at least not too late. And finally, we can participate in... Um, yeah, increase in increasing stock prices and that's quite good and well you see already my email address so if you have questions later or if you want the slides or um, the excel sheets i show you around then just send me a note um, okay the slides you can have already because those you can download directly here uh, via the go to webinar control panel and uh, of course i have to mention because this is part three and i will briefly touch what we have done in part one uh, and part two as well but um, there are recordings available for um, um, those webinars and how to find those. Uh, what I would do is I simply would press YouTube uh, JFD and um, then you go to the YouTube channel of JFD. And um, yeah, here we are um, in a second. Did I open it? Yes. Uh, it will take a minute or hopefully not a minute, only a, a few seconds, but um, and then you are directly at the YouTube channel. Uh, that the internet seems to be slow here uh, has a specific reason. The reason is the webinar um, itself, because um, my my upload is uh, limited, and um, even downloads are then affected by. Um, that bottleneck of uploads. So here we are, and you find those um, power webinars, JFD power webinars, and uh, you see already the German version of uh, today's topic. And if you see show more, then you will find uh, the other ones, stock trading part two and uh, part one as well. Uh, it's uh, on the next page here. So uh, it's easy to find and um, by the way, a lot of other interesting webinars here as well. Good, that's the one thing. The other, as you know, I always have to show the next slide. Um, and the next slide is uh, the worst disclaimer because we, call, we talk here about trading strategies and you may adapt those strategies for your own trading activities. But of course, finally, you do everything on your own and your own responsibility. And that has to be said at least once uh, per webinar. Okay, that's well done. And uh, talking about risk or um, trading strategies, just um, to mention, a uh, few of you might have already realized that we have something new here at uh, JFD. And uh, I will show that as well because there's a new trading strategy on the JFD Invest platform, <clears throat> the social trading platform, so that you can uh, mirror those 
the strategies into your personal JFD invest account. And you see, we have a new number one. Uh, it's a really well doing strategy, FX Global, and um, that has a year to date performance since April of uh, more than 40%, which is really amazing. And uh, if you look for the equity, uh, yeah, you see straight line more or less uh, quite well and uh, it's uh, even doing well in terms of equity balance deviation so uh, difference between floating losses and uh, the balance uh, okay there's only minus nine percent here once uh, during the last seven months but you see in overall uh, all the seven months are green which is really well um, so it's a really nice strategy and I have to say, because I'm always frank with that kind of information, um, that strategy is not coming from my end, it's somebody else. So um, beside Eurodim, all the rest here <clears throat> are um, my personal strategies. You can participate here as well, but uh, just check it out. Uh, you can start uh, that web page also directly from um, the JFT homepage. Uh, you go for investing. but let's go to today's topic so we we talk about stock trading which is by the way not part of uh, jfd invest up to now uh, because those strategies are running on mt4 only and um since what we uh, are dealing here today is uh uh, real stock trading. That means what we, we try to do is buying real stocks. That means long only, of course. Um, otherwise, we would not have that fundamental bias for stocks. And um, yeah, um, in principle, you could, could trade CFDs on stocks as well. But then you have swap costs because um, yeah, you you, uh, you borrow money and uh, you have to pay uh, interest rates <laughs> um, for that. And therefore, <clears throat> yeah, um, real stock trading has an advantage, but you need maybe a little bit more um, investing capital for that. Later, when we go here, <clears throat> I have uh, in mind um, a total amount of 100,000, but I can tell you you can um, downscale that at least by a factor of 10 um, then finally you might not be able to to um, buy all the shares uh, which builds the s p 100 because that will be our final portfolio all those um, strategies within uh, the s p uh, 100 um, why would you miss a few one? For example, uh, I always uh, go for the example of Apple. Apple um, is, uh, has a price of about 200. And uh, normally for my 100,000 account, um, I would use 1,000 euro per strategy or per, per stock. Um, and therefore it works uh, and i could buy five uh, stocks of apple but if i go down by a factor of 10 <clears throat> then at least i could not buy apple anymore um, because with, for 100 euro i cannot buy a single um, share okay but most of uh, the stocks are below 100 and therefore we can scale down the strategy by a factor of 10 about what we do here is first we do a recap of what we have done and basically what we have done is we have used uh, three kind of principal strategies EMA cross trailing stops and high uh, highs trading of course you you might um, comment on trailing stop trailing stop is sound, doesn't sound like a um, strategy or a because it's more a methodology for applying a stop loss. But in this case, we even use just the trailing stop as a strategy itself. Um, and it worked. Um, it has not been the best one, but uh, even that worked out here. And then what we did in part two, we did a combination of those three individual strategies leading to those four kind of combination, three uh, two combinations and one is uh, three of all and we we looked in detail to what we achieved for the overall portfolio trading all the 100 um, shares of um, s p 100 
And then we realized hmm, we might need a new options. And um, so new options are highest trading with a different exit multiplier. Okay, uh, you will later see what I mean with exit multiplier. And we uh, thought about using the volatility as maybe an exit signal. Um, if volatility increases, normally that might be an, a hint of um, that we go in the crash mode uh, and everything goes south. So volatility might be an indicator for for those uh, phases. And later we will use simply the, um, the ATR, the average true range, um, as a measure for volatility, at least that's one possibility. And finally, we go for the winner. So the final strategy, which will be indeed extremely simple. So let me go quickly through our base strategies, EMA cross, EMA cross is really simple. Well, all we do is uh, we look uh, to the close uh, of a day compared to the EMA. Um, with a certain period and if we are above we go long or we keep our trade running um, and if that close is below that EMA well, that's a signal to um, to close the trade or if we have to decide for a new trade um, to not trade so if we are below uh, a specific EMA we step out and will not open any new trades. So that's EMA cross, extremely simple. We always do our decisions on the close, which would mean at uh, 10 p.m. Or, um, German time uh, for those um, <clears throat> United States market. Uh, and that price would trigger out the decision. But what we do, finally, we do always at the open of the next day so we have enough, enough time to, to prepare ourselves so it uh, would be really um, easy to do finally that's for all strategies the next strategy was just the methodology trailing stop <clears throat> which means we open a trade and that a trade gets a stop loss and that stop loss um, is uh, x percent below our entry and then later uh, for the next coming days, we always look for the uh, last low from the, of the previous day, and we decide, hey, that low minus our x percent, if that is above the actual stop loss, then we shift our stop loss upwards, and yeah, that's one way for uh, applying uh, a trailing stop. So it's quite easy, um, and we will see the summary of all the results. Finally. There was a third strategy that was high trading, and on that page I will keep a minute um, because we later go for high trading once again, and uh, that will be interesting. Um, what we can do out of that strategy, high trading, I have no better idea how to name that. Um, so basically, what we do is we we look how long ago, how many days ago is last high within the last trading year. And if that high is not older than, that's our parameter, x days, um, then we open a trade. And we keep that trade open until the last high is older than two times that number. Let me let me quickly, because that's so important, uh, go into a chart and then illustrate uh, that kind of uh, strategy. So let's, um, as always, we go here for uh, our um, Apple, uh, just as an example. And um, I want to illustrate uh, how that high trading is really running. So let me uh, even zoom in uh, more and now we have here the daily chart for apple let's assume our x days equals 20 days so and we have to decide today or uh, a couple uh, of hours ago whether we can open a trade here for apple then what we would do is okay we look for the 
previous day and we count how old has been or is the last high. So it's one day, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the last high <clears throat> is eleven days old. Okay. So if our threshold is let's say twenty days, okay, then it would mean we open a trade. So we would have opened the trade um, at half past uh, three, and then that trade would be running. So now, when to close the trade? Okay, the, um, we have to wait a couple of days, uh, certainly. If from now onwards, the price of Apple would not create any new high, then since our um, high is 11 days old, and our threshold, our trigger would be 40 days, always two times um, the entry threshold. So we, if we would not have any new highs here, so our trade would still go on for 29 days. And then we would close the trade. If in the meantime, we would get a new high here, then we would always reset that counter, meaning from that day onwards, we would have to wait 40 days until we close if there will be no new high. So it's a really extremely simple strategy. The question will be, is that factor of two between entry and exit, um, which has been set just by chance, um, looking out of the, the window and the window is telling me oh go for twice um, no um, that will be the question later so if our threshold would be for example 10 days then we would not open a trade today the idea behind that strategy and there are similar strategies one is called davis um, davis strategy um, is always only stocks who, which create new highs are going north. So we use that information of creating new highs as a selection criteria for a good, a good share. And if you look here into the past of, uh, for example, Apple, then you see, okay, we have a new high here, a new high here. That would be the next new high, the next new high, and the next one. You see, let's say about all every 10 to 20 days, we have a new high, at least within that period uh, of time here. Uh, so it would mean here, <clears throat> it's time that it goes up uh, once again. So we, we have always those new highs um, in not too many days. And that means, hmm, Overall, the price goes north, which is perfect because that's exactly what we what we aim for. So that days since high is a good filter for good shares, and therefore um, I like that kind of a strategy. And yeah, that was a strategy high trading, uh, which we use later once again. So now that's a summary already. The summary of all three individual strategies, always with a certain parameter number. Um, and what you see here is not a single uh, share. No, it's always the portfolio of trading the 100 uh, shares of S&P 100. And then finally, you would get that red line for the last 18 years um, being the equity and the balance would be the blue curve here. And all three look nice. And what we realized when we, because we have uh, looked to a couple of other numbers, that in principle, one can state, okay, the higher those numbers, um, the better, or at least the more profit we get. But in most cases uh, on the costs of high drawdowns. And even here you can see if you go for the, um, um, the trailing uh, one with an initial stop loss of 16%, <clears throat> you see, oh, we have good profits, more than 200,000. Okay, 
but we have a drawdown of uh, about 70,000. Wow. So that drawdown is always our biggest problem within those uh, strategies. They are doing well most of the time, but the financial crisis 2008 to 2010 um, hit them really hard. And that was the point to say, hmm, maybe we can do a little bit better. But overall, if you look for, except those two, three years here uh, in the middle, it's already very good and attractive strategies. So what we tried next step has been to combine strategies, EMA trailing, EMA highs, and so on. And the final result we got just four examples here are the following um, equities for the overall portfolio. Once again, we saw and we, we realized an improvement. So if you look, for example, to the drawdown, the drawdown is here is 20,000. Uh, here is 20,000. So in all three cases, it's, it's, um, it's about only $20,000. Um, but still, Hmm, we might do a little bit better. What we additionally have done was a comparison to the benchmark. Unfortunately, I don't have a chart for the S&P uh, 100. Therefore, I took the S&P 500. And the, that comparison is really impressive. Um, you see the drawdown within the S&P 500 of financial crisis. It's really uh, from 1,500 to about 750. Um, and overall, for the last 18 years, um, the S&P 500 has doubled. Our equity looks already much better than the benchmark. Um, drawdown is less, overall increase is higher. So that's already really good. The problem is the drawdown, the drawdown, especially in financial crisis. And that led to the idea hmm, using two other things here. Um, and, or, and at that time, it must have been three, but uh, the, the middle one, the B, um, I have to skip because it doesn't work out. Um, I tried it uh, and I have skipped it afterwards. So we want to use the day since high, but not with that intrinsic multiplier of two. So entry, for example, 20 days, exit um, within 40 days uh, or after 40 days if there's no new high. So that factor of two, hmm, we, we uh, might vary. And the other has been that volatility. So using the volatility as a trigger to step out. Let's try with that first. Of course, in principle, I'm talking about volatility. And um, there are methodologies for, for measuring volatility. And uh, for example, uh, there are even uh, indices for that. For S&P 500, um, there's an index which is called VIX. Um, and that is a number which tells you about the volatility of the market. The higher, the more volatile, the lower, the more stable. And what we normally observe is if that uh, index, that volatility index goes high, it's or in most cases um, related to a crash situation. And if you have low volatility, then it means, okay, everything is all right. Uh, in principle, it might go north with um, indices. But if it would be that simple, <clears throat> then trading would be really easy. So um, it's a good indicator, but it's not telling you everything. So since we now want to have an indicator on individual stocks, we need something else. And what I thought, okay, why not just go for ATR, so the average true range, which is something also related to volatility. And the basic idea has been to say, uh, or, or, uh, let me start that sentence once again. So now 
I want to step out if, if volatility is high. Hmm. Now my problem. What is high and what is low? It's easy to say terms like that, but you know, we have to measure it because we want to have a strategy based on fixed rules. And therefore I said, okay, why not going for two ATRs? Because the ATR has a period. So we, we can have a slow one and a fast one. Slow is always related to high, higher periods. Let's say ATR 200 and uh, another ATR, which is maybe only 20 or 50, um, that period. That can create higher numbers. And then we have, we can compare that fast ATR to the slow ATR. Let me show you in the chart what I mean. So we have here <clears throat> the, um, the Apple <laughs> um, price. And now we want to have um, an ATR within that. So let me throw it here. And I want to have one, let's say, with a period of 200. And um, OK. And then a second one. Uh, which is with a smaller period. Um, let's go for, I don't know, 30. Um, unfortunately, it would be much better to have both in the same chart because then we can see uh, when they will cross. Um, therefore, <clears throat> at least I can use a, a minor trick um, uh, because I do it with fixed scales here. Uh, because then it's easier to compare the two pictures if I have fixed scale for the two ATRs. And then we see, for example, right now, as we speak, um, the, AT, the, the fast ATR is higher than the slow. And the idea is that is a trigger for stepping out. And we would open trades, for example, in situations like here. Um, you hopefully can realize without just clicking on those numbers um, that this number is lower than this one. And that means, hey, let's jump in into the market so we might open uh, a trade, which has been a good trade. <laughs> uh, you see, and later um, about here, <clears throat> we would have stepped out because volatility increases above the slow um, ATR. Slow means high numbers for ATR periods. And then we step out. And it doesn't work badly already here within that chart visually. So two ATRs, and it's really amazing that this already creates this trading strategy. Let, let me show you. Um, we open a trade if ATR slow is bigger than ATR fast. And we close that trade exactly when those two lines cross. That's all. And this is already a strategy. Believe me. Here are the results. Results already directly for a complete portfolio. And um, the nomenclature here is quite simple. If uh, that picture is labeled with ATR 252, uh, 56 um, slash 64, it means the fast one um, is the 64 and the slow one is the 256. So those two ATR periods and what has been traded once again, the complete portfolio, and you see equity and balance uh, in red and in blue. What do we realize? First, it worked. It worked out. So we have, once again, a quite easy and simple strategy. It's volatility trading. And even only with volatility trading, we can achieve already results of about 100,000 uh, profit, but now the but. Especially the target 
or the, the original idea for that uh, kind of strategy does not work that well. And I tried a couple of combinations um, and no, it doesn't work. Still, we have the high drawdowns and exactly those have been the one we, we want to get rid of here, but it doesn't work that well. On the other hand, the good thing is you can do more or less whatever kind of combination of uh, the two periods, it always worked. That this is indeed the case, I want to show with um, that funny graph. And you might remember we have had a similar graph um, within the last two webinars. So that's not an equity here. <laughs> um, it's it's uh, something strange. Let me quickly explain, because we have a second one later, uh, how to read that uh, chart or how that uh, graph is created. Within that Excel sheet, the single line, the first line here, is representing one share, which has been traded those 18 years. And now we have here the two numbers, the two important numbers, the ATR slow and the ATR fast. and that share has had a profit, so it's a minus number, of minus uh, close to $700 over the 18 years. And the list here is sorted along the profits. So that was the worst strategy for that um, combination of ATR slow and ATR fast. Then we have the second verse, which is this one here. And what I do is I sum up those numbers and those create that curved line. You see, here's the number 100. So it's the 100 different shares within the S&P 100. And you see that about one quarter, so uh, 25 strategies um, are negative. Therefore, the line goes south, and from then onwards, it goes up, which means finally the complete portfolio is positive, but not that good. And then we start once again here at zero for another combination of the two numbers of ATR slow and ATR fast. So, what do we have here is a quick overview about different kind of combinations of ATR slow and fast. And you might just look for the tops here. Then it's telling you, hey, it's overall quite stable. So I can more or less do whatever I want um, for slow and fast. I create a profitable overall strategy. And you see, because the higher numbers are uh, the one to the right, um, higher numbers are good here as well. But overall, it does not really depend strongly on those two periods. If you just look for that cross, it worked already as a trading uh, trading strategy. And for three kind of combinations, I illustrated um, the overall port portfolio performance within those three graphs. So volatility was a good idea. It worked, yes, but what we tried to achieve to get rid of the drawdown hmm, was not that well. Let's go for the other idea, the second one. Heist trading, so it's uh, the slide here is quite funny because <clears throat> it's just a copy of um, the one we discussed already. And you see the only thing which is new is exactly what I put in here in green. So the idea has been, okay, why exactly go for that factor of two between entry trigger days of high a day since high and exit. We might go for, for other um, multipliers as well. Why not? So we can try it. And the good thing as well is um, that we created already an Excel sheet for that kind of um, approach. And uh, here we have that Excel sheet where you can simulate a single stock 
just within Excel. It's once again uh, Apple. And uh, you see that uh, the only thing, if you want to go for other <clears throat> um, shares, then you have to replace the prices here uh, with other data. And that is the Excel sheet for highest trading. And originally, we have had only one parameter. Um, and that is uh, highlighted here in, in yellow. Um, and that is uh, the, the entry days since high. And then if I uh, click on that uh, cell here, then you see then we simply double that number uh, for the exit. And all I have to do in order to get uh, that strategy now um, for other numbers, I have to replace uh, that number by directly by another number, for example, by 32. So now I have um, two degrees of freedom and I can try to get um, better combinations, for example, with those kind of numbers, this kind of numbers and so on. Now strategy is getting a little bit better. In principle, what we can do with that kind of Excel sheet is we can optimize, um, but only for one stock at one time so for one company um, and you can do it by your own and uh, if you like and uh, if you have interest in that excel sheet no problem just send me an email as always um, and then you can figure out um, how to trade that company that company and so on and so forth but the main idea of that um, webinar series here um, with this third part now is that I always want to try everything, one set of parameters for all. Um, of course, I can optimize everything for, um, for a single company, but exactly that I do not want to do here because uh, we are going daily. We don't have that many trades. So statistics is poor. Therefore, I want to have that kind of statistic out of the portfolio. And therefore, I use the same set of parameters for um, everything um, simultaneously. And that's the reason why I don't want to optimize for, um, for a single instrument or a single stock company. So now we can have that multiplier and we can uh, look uh, how that worked. And once again, we have um now it's a little even more you 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 know how to interpret um that funny graph here so it's um let me see what is running first so uh first the the first curve here is the day since high was uh, number four and uh, the multiplier is one meaning um it's a four four strategy so day since high four for exit day since high for, for exit. And then we have that curved line. And then we go for the next one, which is then 4.8 and then so on and so forth. Overall, <clears throat> you see higher numbers are good because those uh, higher numbers are at the end here. Overall, it's not depending that much on, once again, on those parameters, you have to, to, to remind yourself, uh, in, in most cases, I always double a parameter. A double uh, parameter in the trading strategy is, is really um, yeah, something we normally would not do. Um, think about you, you think uh, we have a trading strategy with an EMA of uh, 100, which worked well, then it's nice if it still worked with 120, but normally you would not change those numbers by a factor of two. In this case, everything worked still even doing uh, that uh, doubling um, with those numbers. But let's have a closer look to equities of a complete portfolio. And um, let me go back to my slides, then here we are. Uh, labeling is easy to, to, to read. Um, so now we have two numbers uh, after days since high. The first one is for entry. The uh, second one is for exit. And you see uh, on a first view already um, that it worked well in principle. 
um, so we have um, once again strategies earning uh, more than one hundred thousand uh, dollar here, but we have a but uh, still. Let's start with the right uh, one here. So day since high sixty four two hundred fifty six. Very good profits, 250,000, but highest drawdown. But the good thing now is, let's go to the left. If we go down the road, smaller numbers for the, uh, the exit, it's getting better. And it's even getting better once again, if we do, if we have the same numbers for exit and um, entry. Let me look for that equity on the left so still we are, we have a profit of close to 120000 and a drawdown of about 15000 okay that's a factor of 7 to 8 let's compare it to uh, with the right one here so in total we have 250000 um profits but we have a drawdown of about mm, 50 60 Maybe oh, it's about 70,000. Uh, so that's something I'll always do. I just compare drawdown with profit and then um, just divide those two numbers. So that means here on the right hand, we have a little bit more between three and four times profits compared to drawdown. And on the left side, we have about seven to eight times profit compared to drawdown that's always good since i started the webinar with looking to jft invest strategies that kind of combination i do always when i go for those other strategies i compare the profit with the drawdown and that ratio is telling you a lot of uh, lots about uh, that trading strategy. So that's always a, a quite fix, um, quick and dirty uh, key figure <clears throat> to to um, to judge about a trading strategy. So here's the left is the best, fifteen thousand, and maybe let's let's relax here. Looking for that strategy means it's extremely easy to do. We have just look to look for days since high, in this case 64. And the good thing is um, that strategy is extremely robust, meaning you can change that number, um, but still you have very good results. So it's it's intrinsic stable so to say and it's not that bad having a factor of seven to eight between profit and drawdown that means we can earn a lot of money with that strategy still um, i have to remind you that we are not reinvesting money so uh, it's not like you would do with normal trading if you have profits you might reinvest those, those profits no here we constantly buy whenever we buy for one thousand dollar stocks shares of a single company we do not increase that value in principle you would increase it over time if you have already gained some profits then you this that curve uh, would go exponential um, so you can even earn much more money than shown here uh, doing that kind of reinvesting profits on the other hand i always go here because i i hate that exponential behavior um, it only looks good but it's better to have here a linear behavior than everything is all right um, so we we can profit factor of seven to eight let me summarize that because that is really good and that's why i um, put the title here and the winner is that's fair enough that this simple strategy is already extremely good super simple 
Um, drawdown, 15K profit, 115. <clears throat> That's the factor of seven to eight. And there's another figure I always look. That's what I call the time to recover. The time to recover at the worst situation within the last 18 years is here about two years. And I mean with time to recover from that high to this high or when we are back on the same level. So that is about two years. Okay, I know within those two years you would not feel good. But overall, look to all the other years, there's um, most uh, yearly profits are positive here. And let me switch back to the S&P 500. Um, let's look for time to recover. So we have a very long period, one, two, three times, that's about seven years. And from here to here, it's about five years. Um, so the time to recover within the S&P 500 is much higher than within our strategy. And here you still see <clears throat> the old one. And now the new one with days since high 64, 64. Now we have only two years. A profit multiplier of seven, profit compared to drawdown, and time to recover only two years. Still, I know those two years would be hard. Yes. But how often? we have realized that kind of behavior within the last 18 years. So worst situation here and second one here, but that's already just one and a half years. So that's better. That's okay. And also the remaining time, we have a constant increase within that strategy. Just looking to the balance of that strategy is even better. Of course, balance to look for balance is always better than um, to look for, for the real equity. Then the drawdown um, is even below um, 10. It's about uh, seven to 8,000 uh, euros. So that's quite well. Summary here is that 64 days since last high. So even if you think about, can I trade that portfolio manually? The answer is yes, of course. Because, okay, if you want to start today, yeah, <clears throat> then you have to click through 100 charts. I know, that's, that's a tough job. But if you have opened those trades, if you can open according to those rules, uh, then you can remind yourself uh, because you simply count the number of days. And if you today open the trade and you remember um, Apple, uh, 11 days um, old is the last high. That means for the next 53 days, you even don't have to look to the chart. After those 53 days, you look once for the chart of Apple. And if there's a new high, you can reset your counter and um, get the new number, how many days you can wait until to revisit the chart of Apple. So it's quite easy. Finally, you would realize that you may have to look to two charts per day. Okay, that can be managed. And you have time always between 10 p.m. and half past three p.m. the next day. So there's enough time to um, look for those um, one, two, three charts. That's all. It's only at the beginning you have to do it a little bit more. So it's super simple, that kind of strategy. And therefore I said, that's the winner. And that's fair enough. And we know the strategy is extremely stable because we, we can... Um, turn around those numbers. It doesn't have a big impact on the strategy itself. So it's really cool. Super simple. Can be traded manually without any expert advisor. Um, and even with a portfolio of 100 stocks, um, as I mentioned. So then I'm already at my summary. So our approach with highest trading has been the best one. Um, and we, the, the only thing we finally uh, have had to do was to, to 
think about that magic number factor of two, which was indeed not the best choice at the uh, very beginning. We could improve that strategy by going here for uh, that multiplier of one. Uh, I tried some others as well, uh, but it doesn't change the overall picture that much. Um, everything is good for that kind of strategy. So that means even without any optimization, and we don't have to optimize all the 100 individually, we can achieve remarkable results. And since we realize that um, we can change the parameter and that the, those changes don't have that much impact on the overall equity means that strategy ex is extremely robust. And from my experience, I can say that kind of simplicity and that we can change the parameters on those large scales means we can expect that it will work for the future as well. But I have to, mark, uh, to, to, to make a comment. That's no mathematical proof. I cannot not even prove it. If, if so, it would be uh, very good, but I don't see a chance for that. And of course, it's no guarantee. That means hmm, it worked well for the last 18 years, it has been extremely robust for the last 18 years. But of course, as always for trading, it's no guarantee that it worked for the future as well. But it looks quite well, and um, it's my, my favorite one now. Okay, that's for stock trading. So you see, simple strategy. Um, it's really nice to see that. Um, next month, we switch back to Forex, and you will see we do some crazy stuff then again um, with remarkable results once again. You will see. Hopefully, you enjoyed. Uh, if you have interest in uh, the Excel sheets, just uh, send me a message um, to that uh, mentioned email address here. I make sure that you get everything. And if you have any other question, you just uh, send me an email as well, maybe re uh, related to JFD Invest, or you can contact uh, support of JFD, no problem, but you can uh, contact me personally uh, if you like. So enjoy your time, enjoy the evening. See you again, hopefully. Uh, for the next webinars. Bye-bye.